corals are reliant on zooxanthellae to survive, as they produce oxygen and carbohydrates for the coral to use as energy, as well as consume carbon dioxide and nitrogenous compounds formed by the coral in return. Coral reefs are most commonly found between the latitudes of 25 degrees south and 25 degrees north, as corals thrive best in areas where the water temperature is between 25 and 29 degrees Celsius, making coral ecosystems restricted in ideal growing sites. An anomaly in sea surface temperature in coral reef environments is capable of placing sufficient stress on the coral for them to bleach, a loss of the vital zooxanthellae and a reduction in the pigment concentrations so that the white calcareous skeleton of the coral becomes noticeable. Although bleached coral is not dead, it is weakened by the loss of zooxanthellae and so is vulnerable to problems such as disease, predation and colonisation, making it a true indication of coral health. As field studies of monitoring coral health are expensive, time-consuming and spatially restricted, there is a place for a remote sensing system that can monitor coral reefs for bleaching events to help enhance our understanding of the relationship between sea surface temperature and coral bleaching. There is very strong evidence that high sea surface temperatures and coral bleaching are inextricably linked. Results from a study conducted by Samara Kortal found that in all cases where sea surface temperatures were less than 29.5 degrees Celsius, there was no coral bleaching, and in all cases where sea surface temperatures exceeded 29.9 degrees Celsius, bleaching occurred. Other work by Baker et al. tells of coral bleaching in the Caribbean, where the logarithmic rela relationship between increasing annual coral bleaching and sea surface temperature anomalies is clearly observable. There are many ecological effects of coral reef bleaching, such as an increase in coral disease and mortality, lower coral reproduction and bioerosion. This can have repercussions out with the coral ecosystem, as although coral reefs are only a tiny percent of the total global marine environment, over 100 countries, totaling thousands of kilometres of coastline, are protected from wave erosion, and indispensable coastal marine habitats such as mangroves and lagoons are sheltered by coral reefs. There are also knock-on effects to species that live amongst the coral, such as poorer reef fish health and an increase in the number of species who eat coral from a lack of predation. As a result, the tens of millions of people who depend on coral reefs for fish and trade resources have their livelihoods threatened. The likelihood of mass bleaching in the future is high. Higher sea surface temperatures from a warmer climate will cause higher temperature anomalies in El Nino years, increasing bleaching events. Damaging levels of sea surface temperature will then probably decouple from El Nino cycles, making bleaching events more common. Other factors associated with global climate change, such as an increase in carbon dioxide parts per million in the atmosphere, will also aggravate the effects of coral bleaching. As a result, recent studies have found that corals bleach at lower temperatures in acidified water. It is therefore imperative that coral reefs are monitored for bleaching events so that active steps can be taken to protect these fragile environments. It is possible to monitor coral bleaching with optical remote sensing techniques as the loss of zooxanthellae brightens the spectral reflectance of the coral by approximately 10%, creating a much stronger optical signal than healthy coral. As satellite remote sensing of coral bleaching is still in its infancy, an element of ground truthing is still required, and so currently the optical remote sensing of coral reefs takes place on three scales, in situ, airborne and satellite. In situ measurements are usually scuba diver operated or conducted from a boat above the coral reef. Each of the methods measures spectral reflectance from the coral to ascertain as to whether it is bleached or healthy. Reflectance of coral is recorded by using either a radiometer, a hyperspectral radiometer or a spectral radiometer. These different devices record the spectral reflectance of the coral at different resolutions and the levels of reflectance are used to work out whether the coral is healthy or bleached. This analysis is often backed up by images taken through video recording and fiber optic cables to ensure that the corals have been correctly identified. In doing this, a spectral library can be developed using these findings to allow for a more confident classification of coral type when using satellites. Airborne imagery can help to provide a more detailed picture of the extent of bleached corals, supplementing in situ surveys as well as contributing to developing technical specifications for satellite based monitoring. Using the visible spectrum of red, green and blue channels, aerial photographs are taken from onboard aircraft from altitudes of around 900 metres to supplement coral health surveys. Satellites with a high spectral resolution are required to monitor coral reefs as they are generally very heterogeneous. The compact airborne spectrographic imager is a multi-spectral imager 
which can achieve a high accuracy when mapping at fine resolution and is able to distinguish bleached and healthy coral in visible wavelengths. Landsat thematic mapper satellites can also be used to monitor coral bleaching as they have one of the highest spatial resolutions of global sensors with the added benefit of having a large archive of imagery to make comparisons from. The Iconus satellite can also be used as it can offer both multispectral and panchromatic imaging to, to a fine resolution and also has off nadir pointing capabilities so that solar reflectance contamination can be minimised. There are several difficulties presented with trying to monitor coral bleaching using satellites. The two main problems are that the spatial resolution currently offered by satellites is still too low to monitor highly heterogeneous reefs, allowing for misclassification, and the effect of the water column attenuation of solar radiation, as it is wavelength specific. Other problems are presented from optical similarities between reef features, cloud cover, the depth of water, atmospheric interference and algal recolonisation. There have been numerous studies conducted into the feasibility of using remote sensing platforms to monitor coral bleaching. Yamano and Samura investigated the possibility of using images taken by a Landsat TM satellite to detect and monitor coral reef bleaching. The results suggested that Landsat TM could be used to monitor coral reef bleaching, but the coral reef would need to have approximately 23% of bleached coral coverage due to the 30 meter spatial resolution of Landsat TM. This would mean that any monitoring by Landsat TM would be restricted to reefs with high coral coverage over large areas, and the low spatial resolution could cause misidentification of objects such as partly bleached coral. However, it can be noted that Landsat TM imagery is a much more cost effective way of monitoring coral reefs than a finer scale resolution platform, has repeat coverage which allows detection of change, and is accurate at coarse descriptive resolution mapping. Elvich et al. conducted a study in the Keppel Islands in the Great Barrier Reef to assess the viability of using Iconus imagery to detect bleached corals and the value of the information the satellite could provide. Bleaching was successfully detected as a brightening in the blue and green bands, but not in the red, near-infrared or the panchromatic bands. This result, this result means that bleached coral has a spectral signature, as well as making it straightforward to create colour composite images that make bleached coral easily recognisable. However, the study conducted was under very ideal conditions, with no cloud cover and 92 to 99% of the coral covering the reef being bleached, making it easy to observe. The technique used in this study also depends on an image being available of the area of interest before the bleaching event occurred, for reference. As a result, the conclusions drawn from this study suggest that Iconus could be used to detect coral bleaching, but may not be suited to making measurements in other reefs around the world. An unintended study result from this study is that by using Iconus to observe coral bleaching, the authors have found that it is much easier to make detailed maps of coral reefs in general, which in turn can help monitor the health of coral reef ecosystems. To conclude, it is possible to observe coral bleaching using optical remote sensing, However, further development from in-situ measurements is still required to minimise the effects of the limitations from monitoring coral reefs from satellites. The development of higher spatial resolution satellites will only aid in monitoring how coral reefs re react to changes in the environment and to make proactive steps towards protecting these fragile ecosystems.